Good morning. There's been some changes I'm making to the upcoming part two of the TIF IT990 insulation tester on the IC chip, which as of this morning, Monday morning, has not arrived. So I think it got lost in the mail. The reason I'm making the changes is not because the um, the fact that the chip isn't here, because I told you when it comes in I will make part two. I will still do that, but there's a delay on that, simply because I called, well I got a message on my cell phone uh, the other yesterday, uh, a voicemail yesterday being Easter Sunday, um, and I didn't want to call... Um, back on Easter Sunday. I got a, a voicemail from uh, James Asbell and he's been very very helpful on my electronic stuff. Kinda like my mentor. And um, he expressed um, but the biggest thing is he feels that the TL494 IC chip may not be the right chip for this. Um, he was viewing my last video on the close-ups of this and tracing out the circuit as best he could from the video and established a few pointers, pointed out a few things to me I should say, um, I traced out the circuit Whereas pin 13 was the output to the base of the transistor. Now according to Jim, and I don't have this uh, data sheet in front of me, all I have is this and that's a home, that's just a drawing that I made so I can identify pin 7 and pin 12 as a positive and negative. Okay, but I talked to him on the phone for quite a while and he says the output of the TL494 from what he can see is not pin 13 but I think he said something pin 11 I just scribbled in here you know uh, I'm at a disadvantage because I don't have the data sheet here and um, I don't want to be printing out too many things because I'll be out of ink again in the printer so uh, it's not going to do me any good to print out the data sheet and stuff like that because I other than just plugging these things in, I don't know anything about integrated circuits and all the complicated things. There was a lot of stuff in a TL494 uh, that uh, Jim was telling me about. And he feels that it may not be. Um, I asked him, I said, you know, I asked Jim if he would mind if I sent this board to him. And he says, no, not at all. I'd be happy to do it. Because he, he's real good at this stuff. You know, um, you know, he's worked on instruments and all that kind of stuff. So he's very familiar with it. And what he says he's going to do is literally he's got a copy machine. He's going to copy the circuit board. And then he's going to run it to, I think he said Photoshop, I know nothing about that, that's about one of the most complicated photo editing programs out there, and uh, <laughs> I even tried GIMP uh, years ago, and that's complicated as hell. And then something about transferring the components and overlaying them on here or something, anyways make it like transparent. Uh, you guys that do this kind of stuff would know all about that because you guys are the expert. There are some some of my channels I watch, they, they work with printed circuit boards all the time and I can name uh, two gentlemen and I'm sure there's a heck of a lot more out there that do that kind of stuff. But anyways, with me, I have a hard time. You got to remember now, I'm going to give you a close-up of this. 
when you're looking at a chip, of course, from what everybody's been telling me, and I do remember that, as you're looking at the chip, the notch in this case is upright. You're looking at the chip from the front, and you're counting, in this case, the 16 pin chip. So you're counting one, two, one to eight down, and then nine to 16 going up, counterclockwise. Okay, that's what my viewers have been telling me, and that's exactly what everyone's been telling me, including uh, Jim. So, uh, the problem I have is, when I turn it over to transport, transpose it on the other side, it gets very confusing. I have to keep flipping over. Let's see now, and this and this, and I end up, you know, what I really should do is to draw another diagram and make it in reverse in here. But anyways, Jim is going to decipher this out. He's going to print it out and then basically just about make a schematic for this. That's not going to tell you what the chip is that goes in here. But after he traces it out, he will establish whether or not a TL... 494 is the correct chip for this and the indications are according to Jim and what he's been pointing out to me it probably is not the chip that should be going in here now one of the things I was going to do if the chip came in today is one of my other viewers had a very good idea and don't ask me who it is I don't have that information. I have to go and look on the computer and see who made the comment. But whoever made that comment, I'm not going to even try to guess who it was, said put the chip in, but don't put the transistor in, which is still missing. I still got it out. And put a scope on the output or where it would go to the base of your transistor and see what kind of waveform you get. That is a very good idea, and I was thinking of doing that. Uh, you know, but I don't have the chip, so I can't do that. That's not here, so I think what's going to happen is I'm going to have to wait until they come from Singapore. But um, uh, Jim Asbell says he has some chips, he has some TL494s, and if it works out where a TL494 can be tried in here without blowing it out, he may do that when he gets the board. I'm not sure. So, I'm going to get you a close-up of this. I don't want to be talking too much. And then I'm going to close out this video because I'm going to ship the board to him. i got to find a little box. Uh, the board is long. The board is probably, I'd say, close to 8 inches. No, the board is 6.5 inches by 2.5. by one. Okay, so I just gotta find a box. There's well that might work. I lay it sideways like that and ship it in that. Okay. But anyways, regardless, unpack it real well. Only the board I'm gonna send him. That's all he wants. He knows his negative and positive go up here. Nine volts. And that's it. So I'm going to show you a close-up now, and the reason I'm going to do that is Jim and I were kind of hoping, uh, Jim had mentioned it this morning on the phone, kind of hoping that all the times that I've showed this, that we were kind of hoping some of our my viewers would have a, a meter like this that would be willing to pop out the board and take a peek at their chip and see what the number is, and boy, that would sure save a lot of headache if we can only find out what chip went in here, because it's really guesswork. A TL-494, there's quite a few viewers that says it might be that. Um, from what Jim says, that's a, a common chip that they do use in uh, a pulse with power supplies, I guess he called it. Okay, but that don't mean it's going to work in here. Okay. And we were hoping some of my viewers may have a, one of these meters, but I think that's zero chance that somebody could look in their meter and 
tell me what the chip is. All right, enough. I want to get a close-up of this. Okay, the first thing that I want to point out, you see these terminals here? I'm going to flip this board over. These are where the banana plugs go in for your test leads. All right, which means the, ch the notch on the chip is facing these two switches right here. Okay, so that's where the notch is. And the transistor was right in here. Okay? So if you're reading this, here's the notch. It's a 16 pin chip. Pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 are this way. All right, so just remember that the notch is faced up as I am holding the board with the switches at the top. Flipping it over, I have not turned the board, I just flipped it over so the notch is still right there. I could put a dot in there, but I won't. So now... The confusing part is you're not reading pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 here. You are reading it this way now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now, as I was struggling talking to the phone... Uh, struggling with my magnifying glass and my eyelope while talking to Jim on the phone, it appears, okay, over here, I think that's the base of the transistor. Collector's in the middle. So this is probably the emitter, okay? It appears to go to pin 13, Pins 14 and 15 are shorted out, and then 16. Now, it looks like there's a jumper going from here down here. It's hard for me to see that. But I'm doing this so that maybe some of you guys can trace this thing out and, and see. The plus and minus that you're seeing here is where the meter goes, here and here. That's where the meter goes. That's not where the power is. See, it says negative here. And there's a trace here. It goes over and over here. Well, the meter negative was soldered here. Meter positive was soldered over here. Because your power input, your positive and negative are here, near the switches. Okay? That's where the 9 volt goes. Negative 9 here, positive 9 here. Okay? And this is where your meter is. Okay? I'm doing this too just so um, when Jim gets the board, I'm sure he knows this. There's, these two terminals here are where the meter wires go to for the meter movement. Okay? So, let's turn this back over. Here's the notch. Okay. And we're just moving this around. These are your high voltage diodes, your red ones, and the two the black capacitors are the high voltage caps. <clears throat> so we turn this over. I'm going to do one more shot here. 
Now, if that's a TL-494, according to Jim, they're not pinned out right. You've got This pin here goes to this pin with a trace going down here. And this lug here is the cold side of the primary of your high voltage transformer. This is the high side or where the transistor Let's make sure I know what I'm talking about here. I'm having a hard time reading that. I'm trying to get it. There's a lot of reflection here. All right. This and this is the primary of the high voltage transformer. This is the secondary of the high voltage transformer. This is the common. And it goes to one of the pins, and I, I, in the viewfinder, I cannot read that too good. So I'm leaving it up to you to look at it if you are interested. But it appears that the collector's in the middle, and the collector goes, of that transistor which has been removed, goes to directly to the transformer primary winding right here, high side. And if this is the base of the transistor, again, the diagram is very difficult to read on that particular transformer, transistor rather, because the emitter could be here or the emitter could be here. Okay, but I'm assuming that's the base. If that's the base, it goes right directly to this pin right here on the IC. Remember now the notch is up here. So that would be the fourth pin down. And the fourth pin down is going to be pin 13. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, find the box to put this in. I'm going to ship it out to Jim. But I wanted to make this video just to show you and to see what we're up against here. I kind of think that what's going to happen is we're going to go kapooey with the trans, the IC, even without the trans sister in there. But I don't think a TL... 494 is going to work in here. But, however, maybe this, this is hooked up in such a way that it may work. I don't know the exact wiring of this. And this is why I want to send this to Jim, because he will figure it out. But no guarantees that you will be able to come up with a solution if the TL-494 does not work. So, that's it on this video. I'm going to hold this here for a minute in case, for whatever reasons, anybody wants to trace this thing out. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for part two, but it won't be right away. It'll either be... An announcement that the chip is not compatible and we can't do anything more with it or whatever but at least I can't say it's a failure on my part because if you can't get the right part number because it's not available because there's no information well I can't blame myself for that I can't blame anybody for that except I should not have bought this thing even though it was stated that it does not work on high resistance. 
I knew there was a problem with the high voltage because these things generate a high voltage in order to get the read a very high resistance. But I thought it would be something simple like a transistor. I had no idea it would use an integrated circuit, but I should have known better. Thank you for watching. I hope you all had a happy Easter. We sure did. Take care and stay tuned because there'll be more to come, whether it be this or another video. Take care, everybody.